Hi, today I'd like to talk about the difference between climb milling and conventional milling. And it has to do with the direction of the feed in relation to the rotation of the cutter. Uh, so just for demonstration purposes, I've got the, uh, the mill geared down to its lowest speed so you can see the rotation of the cutter. Now, cutters only work in one direction. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a right-handed cutter, so this is turning clockwise when viewed from the top. If you were nine feet tall and you could see the top of the drawbar, it would be turning clockwise. Now, as far as feed rate goes, for conventional milling, the feed of the part would be going in the opposite direction of the rotation of the cutter, just like this. The benefit of doing conventional milling, and the reason why we should really stick to it with manual machines, is that the lead screw that drives the table is loaded in the correct direction against the nut, meaning that uh, the force of the cutter is pushing it back against the nut. Now when we do climb milling, which is like this, where the feed is going in the same direction as the rotation of the cutter, then uh, the lead screw can potentially get pushed away from the nut. Uh, the load is not in the correct direction. So what happens with climb milling, especially if you've got an older machine that has a lot of backlash, which a lot of manual machines do, the force of the cut actually violent re violently removes the backlash that's in the table. Um, so you suddenly take a really deep cut of whatever your backlash is. So this tends to violently move the table and you can chip up your cutter, you can destroy your part. If your part's not held very well, it can get ripped out of the vise. The reason climb milling is used a lot is that it leaves a better surface finish, which I'll demonstrate next. So one other thing, uh, and this is a situation that I get asked about a lot. I want to be perfectly clear here you cannot change between climb and conventional milling by changing the rotation of the cutter. The cutter only cuts in one direction, so running it in reverse will just destroy your cutter. The only way you can change between climb and conventional milling would be to change the direction that your feed is going. So here I'm going to make a conventional cut across this piece of aluminum, and what you'll see is the chips that get cut on the rotation of the cutter tend to get swept back into it and recut. Uh, they get kind of jammed back into the surface finish. So conventional milling doesn't tend to leave the best surface finish, but since uh, we're on a manual machine, that's the best way to hog off a lot of material. So let's go ahead and do this. So you can see all the little fuzzy bits that have been uh, jammed back on there. And for the most part, they rub off, but we still have quite a lot that are just stuck. Um, and the surface finish isn't horrible, but it could be a lot better. Let me reset the camera and we'll do a climb cut this time. So this is a climb cut. The rotation of the cutter is the same. The only thing that's different is the feed direction. So I'm feeding that way instead of the other way. This cuts only about five thousandths of an inch. So right away you can tell a huge difference in the surface finish. If I wipe away this, those chips, I mean it's quite a good finish. And this is why climb cuts are used pretty much exclusively on CNC machines. Uh, for one thing, they nominally don't have any backlash in the screw, the lead screw that drives the table and the nut. And you've got a very large, long nut that has recir recirculating balls on there and a ball screw. Uh, so they don't tend to have a lot of backlash. And for the most part on a new machine, they just don't have any. So you can get away with it. The climb cut, a heavy climb cut is not going to screw up your part or your cutter at all. Um, on a conventional machine though, on a manual machine with an Acme lead screw or whatever it else, else it uses, there's got to be play in between that screw and the nut, otherwise it wouldn't move. And that play, that backlash, is what destroys things with a climb cut on a manual machine. Now that one, that cut that I just made, was very light. Uh, it was only five thousandths of an inch, so I was just skimming off the last little bit. But in aluminum, that, uh, that works quite well 
aluminum is probably the greatest center on uh, on conventional cuts. The surface finish tends to be horrible. So it's, uh, it's not bad practice at all to come behind and make a very light climb cut on aluminum about five thousandths of an inch. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tip.